Amy, I'm so used to you being right here. I know, I was like. Heidi was right then. Oh. She said, his name. Yeah. Oh, I don't have the same. Okay. That's okay. All right, we'll wait to hear if there's anybody that wants to address the board. No, okay. All right, so then we, um, moving on to uh, adopting the agenda. Um, I would like to make a change to 9.4. I want to table that um, so then we can discuss that at the work session and then we can bring that forward in two weeks to our next time. Just so everybody can get any questions answered then. It just makes more sense to me for that. 9.4? 9.4. And then I'll just revise the timeline. Okay. Any other changes to the agenda? No. Okay. All right, I'm looking for a motion to approve the agenda with that change. So moved. Motion by Lindsay. Is there a second? Second. Second by Bobby. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And a state and opposed, same sign. Moving on to rebel recognition. <coughs> Hearing from the middle school. All right. So, Miss Westgard, she has a little. I don't know you might if you're able to see from there. I mean, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm come good. over here. Um, she was. You laughing because there's no signal? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, you just have to move it. Okay. Oh wait, no, it's it. okay. Okay, so ahead. just to brag a little bit about Miss Westcard, she received a very competitive fellowship with an amazing opportunity for her to expand her learning and bring back to her students. And uh, she's going to share that with you today. I just want to stress that this was super competitive and it's amazing and I'm so proud of her for, for getting it. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I was selected by National Geographic as one of 40 Grosvenor Teacher Fellows this year. And it's a competitive application process that um, they go through looking for people who are committed to geographic education. What I'm going to do, essentially it's a professional development opportunity of a lifetime, and they will take all 40 of us and we're going on different um, destinations or expeditions across the planet. Um, I will be on this ship, the Explorer, and sometimes on that Zodiac there, hopefully I will <laughs> figure out how to get in and out of that thing. So <laughs> what it's going to be is a life-changing field-based experience for myself. I will be gone June 13th through the 29th, and you can see the map up there. Of course, I have to have maps. I'll be going into Oslo, Norway, and then once I get up to uh, Longyearbyen, which is in this archipelago of Norway called Svalbard, I'll get on the ship and we'll go around there. Then we'll follow the Vikings where they went along that ice sheet, if the ice sheet is still there. Um, with uh, climate change, it's been you know hit or miss with that ice um, on that western side of Greenland. Then we'll go into Greenland, and then we'll end up coming down around that north, northwestern part of Iceland. So what am I going to do while I'm there? I'm going to enhance my geographic knowledge with um, experts in the field. There'll be naturalists, there are National Geographic photographers, there are scientists, there's some underwater specialists, and um, on top of that, there's some paying guests. So I'm kind of, I'm not exactly a crew member, but I have to act like I am a crew member and be on my best behavior while I'm there. So we'll be investigating the human impact of, um, on these places that uh, a lot of people haven't been in these pristine environments. And um, I think the highest north I'll be is 80 degrees north, so it's about 600 miles from the North Pole. And um, what I'm hoping to do is taking um, these onboard experiences and my learning and bringing it back into the classroom to kind of transform my teaching and hopefully engage students and colleagues about the Arctic. National Geographic, the last couple of years, have started this geo-inquiry process. It's very similar if you're familiar with PBL learning, project-based learning. And so what this means for the students is I'm going to come back with a new Arctic-based um, geo-inquiry uh, unit. And hopefully, at the end, once I, hopefully I'm inspired and I get all this together, that students are going to act locally to make a change um, to a global issue that is present in the Arctic. Some things that I've thought about before going um, has to do with food and food supply. 
Svalbard has um, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. It's where nations deposit their seeds. They call it the Doomsday Vault. Um, so I might try to tie something with that into Minnesota agriculture. Um, climate change is another hot topic, along with um, plastics in the ocean. So I'm also going to keep myself open to you know, just learning something that I had not known before and bringing it back in the classroom. So that's that. Awesome. <laughs> well, we will look forward to hearing from you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Cool. Lots of pictures. Yes. Oh, yes. It's very awesome. It's great to get the summer one. I know. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You, no, you can go right here. This is good. <laughs> My name is Grace Ramos, and I'm a sophomore here. So um, about what a couple months ago, probably, mm -hmm. Mr. Tigerson sent a, a scholarship opportunity to myself and Mrs. Ullman, and Mrs. Ullman contacted some students about this opportunity, and Grace took advantage <coughs> of it. And it's pretty cool because there's only one, or there's only six of them in the state of Minnesota, and she's one of us, one DGF. It is the Stars of the North chapter for Women in Aviation has six scholarships available for Minnesota. The girls look to learn about aviation, aerospace, and team building at the National Flight Academy at, at a week-long camp in Florida. And great students in grade seven and twelve were eligible. She applied and she received one. So we're pretty excited for her. Awesome. Why don't you tell them a little bit about what you, what you learned? Uh, the National Flight Academy is an educational activity authorized uh, by the United States Navy, and you basically get to go on a fake ship, basically, or plane, called the Ambition, and it addresses different STEM learning opportunities, and you get to, throughout the week, rotate through different jobs, and uh, the disciplines include aerodynamics, propulsion, navigation, communications, play physiology and meteorology along with core values such as teamwork and leadership skills. And you basically just get to meet a whole bunch of other girls that have been selected for this. And you get to fly down to Pensacola, Florida and spend a week there. It's pretty amazing. Awesome. So, so one of six. Grace, when are you doing this? Um, um, when is that like June 17th? That's what it is. Yeah. To the 23rd. Yeah. Now, is this a field of interest for you? Hmm? Is this a field of interest for you? I mean, yes. this is where you're... I would like to go into the Air Force. In, yeah. oh, or, or her Navy, you know, yeah. my son's yeah. Navy. <laughs> and, I, and I asked her how she got interested in this, and I thought it was really interesting. Tell, her, tell them how you got interested in the aviation field. Um, in tech ed, when we had the little flight simulator. In middle school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she's been interested in it that long. Yeah. So. Wonderful. And then did you go to Fargo into something, or...? On this. Um, yes, the Midwest Aviation Symposium is basically uh, a day of the year where a whole bunch of pilots or people who are interested, such as students, will go to a certain location. This year it was um, the Delta Hotel, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, and there are different sections or like seminars that you can go to and you basically get to listen to professionals talk about what they're in and just their job in general. So that was pretty interesting to hear them all speak. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Pretty proud of you. We have we have a graduate from DGF who is in the army and flies. Oh. So I have a great contact for you if you're interested in talking to her. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Yeah, in the next meeting we'll have a group coming in that went to the model UN conference last oh. weekend and mm -hmm. they are all they are very excited about promoting and advocating for that program to get expanded into next year. Mm -hmm. So they they want to talk to Good. the board directly about that. Oh that's that. nice. So mm -hmm. it's great. That's nice. Uh, this is Roseanne Alness, where is... And, and Roseanne uh, doesn't have a report tonight. We moved hers, we bumped hers up earlier. Mm -hmm. she, it was on the schedule originally, oh, okay. but we moved that one up uh, oh, back sweet. in. Two weeks ago. Yep. Okay. All right. Then we will move on to Mr. Jacobson. I'm not going to lie. 
this is a tough act to follow after. <laughs> <laughs> Aviation grace and care, you're just killing it. Now you've got to do a tech report. Come on. <laughs> this will be quick. A uh, quick overview. Um, I really want to talk about two things tonight, really uh, uh, from a tech, from, from an educational perspective, and then maybe one from an operations per perspective. What I'm handing out is a result of a, it's an annual survey that we do every year. And what the admin, what the tech community is, is this is a company we partner with uh, called uh, Bright, Bright Bites. And they are in one in four schools in the nation. Kind of their, their niche is to do surveys and assessments how technology is being used in schools, specifically K-12. Um, we take the survey in December, and it's done by all certified staff and students three through 12. And these are people that, these are statisticians. So they, they got specific questions, and they really kind of look at different areas. Uh, that's from tech access to infrastructure to support to 21st century to really what like you know the four C's are. The first page is kind of a district overview. If there was like a 10,000 foot view, this is where DGF is at. Uh, we get kind of scored at, at a proficient level. And one thing that I like about with this company, this kind of shows us historical data of where we're at and where we've been. So you can kind of see that growth from where we started in 2013 and each year we're kind of showing growth uh, overall across the district. If you look at the second page, I included just a couple snap, uh, a couple example reports. Um, this one is quality of support. This one is probably, uh, this is in my wheelhouse. This is something I kind of gravitate towards, but I'm really appreciative of uh, the work the guys do. And what this question, this survey kind of shows is if teachers, students need support, how, you know, how we did. And what this is a comparison of how DGF compares with the national average. And these are all K-12 schools, you know, that have, that participate in the survey. So um, they, they do good work and I'm appreciative of that. So um, that's, a, that's a positive. Like anything, if you look at the last report, and again, this is just a handful of reports that this tool can have, is probably an area for growth. And what this is, is uh, use of access of, of digital textbooks, specifically digital curriculum. And when you can see right now, like 69% uh, you know, of staff haven't used that ever. And we've got another 5% you know, percent every few months. Um, in my opinion, that's an area for growth. And I'll be the first one to say, we don't necessarily want to have digital curriculum just for the sake of the change. But I think it's fair to say we could look at you know, different, different tools you know, that are out there. But if you also look at the comparison, that's not unique to DGF. I mean, you got 59% of other schools at a national level. They're kind of in the same boat that, that we're in, that we're trying to figure things out. You know, um, in my opinion, I think uh, we're at a good spot at the substitution level. So staff and students are comfortable in using the devices. We use them for assessments. We use them you know, on a handful of different research areas. But I do think our next hurdle will probably be having a more thorough look at the different different curriculum that's out there in a digital format. And, and some of that is ready, some of it's not ready. Um, I don't think there's gonna be one tool, one solution that's gonna be out you know, for everything, but it's definitely, definitely an area for growth. The other area I wanted to talk about tonight was uh, really kind of on the operations side. Um, we have rolled out, as most, most of you already know, SAS, or not SASE, uh, Synergy. That's our student information mm -hmm. system, and then we did that last summer. Uh, overall, that's gone well. One area that I think we're still working with, Region 1 and EduPoint, is the handshake between Synergy and SchoolPay, our uh, credit card solution. So that is, that's a clunky experience in my opinion, uh, but we're hoping to have that, hoping to have that worked on this summer. We're gonna find out what they have uh, to enhance that, that handshake between the two platforms. Our goal is to have something ready by this fall, but we're, we're at the mercy of what EduPoint can have, what they can do. A um, few other projects we're working on that's probably of a more public, more public presence or uh, more probably more talked about is our website. We're going to redo our website this summer, and the platform that we currently have is a Google platform, and that is being retired sometime next year. So we are working on building. Uh, the new site, it's gonna be more mobile friendly, more ADA compliant. I've got a lot of, a lot of positive feedback 
good feedback from the tech committee on what we need to improve on. I shared with the group. I'm comfortable on the functional level, but when it comes to the making it look pretty or looking at the marketing side, that's not my strength. So I'm appreciative of, of the committee's feedback on that so far. My goal is to have that cut over sometime in June or July. And then probably one other project we're working on significance, we're doing a copier uh, proposal. So we're going through that process right now. Our current copiers are five years old. They are, they're the vehicles that's got 300,000 miles. They're beat up, they're, they're in tough shape. So we're going through the process and I'm getting new bids, new equipment, uh, seeing what that comes in from a cost perspective, but also a reliability and what we can do to actually have scoring or some type of data that shows how our company defines is, is reliable products. So reliability on our copiers is, is an ongoing challenge that we have. So with that being said, that's a fast and furious overview, but I guess I would open it up for any questions, thoughts, or concerns from you guys. Looking forward to a new website. That'll be nice, especially yeah. with the cell phones. So we're, we're that'll be good. We're gonna do less is more. So if content isn't being updated or if it's kind of a challenge, I'm, I'm just in general, if it's a department or an office or a you know, site, I'm, it's gonna be gone, you know, on it. So, and from what we've early tested, you can, re I like the, we got more and more mobile users. So it just needs to, that's where, that's where everything's going. So I think it'll be definitely a positive, that's positive change. Good. Do you look at updating as far as on the website, anything that's on there that if, if you're announcing anything that there's an immediate link that a parent can go on and pay something right away, I know sometimes it gets really frustrating to pay for a fee and you have to search to see where that is. So let's say Tracy has something as far as driver's ed, this is being announced, Well, there's that little link that you can do that right in there instead of searching for it. Is that something that the tech committee is looking at doing? We can, if it comes to notifications like that, I believe we can add URLs into the, the notification. But those are, those are two separate tools. So it's kind of a balancing act. If we can keep that message short and sweet to, hey, we want people to you know, come to attention X, Y, Z, my focus or my suggestion would be to keep that message as short and sweet as possible because we're, we're drowning in emails and texts and stuff like that. Um, and as far as, but if it's a static URL, yes, I, I feel confident we should be able to do that, but I'll, I'll confirm that. Um, but as far as it goes to making a payment, mm -hmm. that is something where parents are gonna, the majority of our payments, probably 85, 90% of them are within the Synergy. They have to log in as their account. So if, if Tara and I are paying something for Alyssa, we have to log in <laughs> to our account. We're not gonna be able to, we're not gonna be able to send that specific of a URL to, on the masses because that, that's an individual login piece. Anybody have any questions? You touched base on the synergy and school play or school pay. It's so, a challenge, but you're working it, through it. It, it. You know, it's functional. And I was talking to Cindy a while back. Even you know, day one, um, it was ready, right? You know, at the start of the school year. But I'd be lying to you if I didn't have some colorful words. You know, as I'm sitting at home trying to make payments for this, uh, yeah. through the process. So uh, their degree of integration is different from what I kind of wanted, but that's. Uh, we're one of the first schools on the Highway 10 side to use school pay, so we got we got aggressive pricing on it. It needs, those two products need to talk to each other, because in the past we had them two separate and it was simple and it was good, but we got zero for reporting capacity, and now that we got coaches and we got departments, I can say, yep, when Alyssa will use the choir group, for example, and Tara will make payments for that, Cindy, Brooke, whoever does it needs to be manually running reports. We can have those teachers, those coaches see in real time who's paid, who hasn't. But that only works when you got those two platforms talking and it'll get better, but it's still, mm -hmm. I, I think clunky is a good word for it. That's <laughs> talking to each other. So. Okay. Thanks, John. All right, All right. thank you. <coughs> All right, do we have any board committee reports? Um, I just, Kimberly sent me an email, March Madness forms, if anybody has those. Um, if anybody has those, uh, turn them in to Kimberly. And that's it.
All right, so we will move on to 6.4, the superintendent report. We'll be short because we have a work session yep. afterwards. Yes, Believe it or not. A um, few things. Uh, like I said, next meeting we'll have a presentation by uh, the youth in government, the, the kids, that, the students that went to that last weekend. So that'll be coming. Um, we received some information about uh, the insurance rate renewal um, and it was it was better than what we've been seeing um, I would say uh, statewide but it was our it was our highest increase for PEEP uh, the public employee insurance program um, overall it was about a 3.8 3.9 percent increase uh, depending upon they what they do is we have three different offerings um, and again it, it it doesn't affect the district as much as it affects the employees more so okay because you've set amounts for for majority uh, of you, of the employees um, so we have three different offerings and when we look at those renewal rates like I said they they go through and divide they look at each group within PEEP. Just, uh, so it may vary from 4.5% down to uh, 3 point some percent overall, that 3839. So that's the new rates that are coming. Um, so info is coming on that. I don't know if Jeannie sent it out yet or not. Um, MSEA, so those of you that are on negotiations for the non-certified, uh, we've had a request, um, three potential dates, and we can talk about this more in the work session, but May 1st, 2nd, or 3rd were the dates that they requested as for a first meeting. So we've got a few, a little bit of time to look at that. So again, May 1st, 2nd, or 3rd was the request for the first meeting, any of those three dates. Um, the budgeting process, Again, tonight in the work session, I'll give you uh, the information that came out of each of the four sites as far as uh, the things uh, for potential uh, recommendations as we, as we discussed before. The next step is the, IL, the district leadership team meeting on Wednesday. Uh, a couple of days, we're going to go through those uh, requests and get prioritization from that committee. So then we'll have those prioritizations. Uh, the admin team is sitting down and has a meeting uh, next week. So you're gonna have recommendations coming from all the levels over when we hit the 23rd. And then it's really gonna come down to which way you want um, to direct us to work with. Do you want you know, to take the following uh, to make up that whatever, uh, set amount that we look at for a target and again we'll talk about that in the work session tonight okay um last thing that i have that isn't going to be on the work session uh, we got notification on friday that we will be able to tap into a new funding stream potentially as a school district called uh, achievement and integration we have not qualified for that previously. Um, and the only reason we qualify now is that we have a couple neighboring districts that have been identified in isolation for that. And what that means is that they have to have a demographic group that is at least 20% higher than their neighboring districts. And so part of the, the concept behind the achievement and integration funding is that they know that there's crossover that takes place between school districts even if the one district has uh, a higher percentage we know that with open enrollment what else not some of those demographics will impact the school districts neighboring school districts so for instance Pelican Rapids Holly some of those districts have had it because Pelican Rapids qualified Moorhead now qualifies with the new calculation. Uh, Norman County West qualifies with the new calculation. 
Um, so I was in contact with Missy Eidsness and we are setting up a meeting to look at the impact of what type of programming. We already share resources um, with the American Indian funds that we receive from the state. So this is an expansion. Uh, the actual impact is potentially about $93,000. It's a 70-30 split with aid and levy. Is it one-time money? It's you yearly in the formula from this point forward. 70-30? 70-30 aid. So it's, it's a good bang for the buck. So it, you know, when we, when we think about some of the things that we're already looking at expanding with AVID, it's a perfect, I had a conversation with uh, the, uh, the person from MDE on Friday afternoon also. Um, some of the things we're already doing with a partnering district uh, go hand in hand. So it's going to give us some funding to support some of the things that we're already looking to expand into the high school. So this is, this is a good thing. So it will affect the first <coughs> levy will be 18 payable 19. So if it's 18 payable 19, then it, fix, it affects fiscal 20. You remember all that works. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, we'll talk about some of this stuff more when we get into the work session, but that's a, a brand new funding stream. And, and again, this just came about last Friday. And it, it, we, we do not hold the cards on that. If Moorhead decides not to do it, we don't qualify ourselves. So we have to qualify through a neighboring district. But Moorhead is definitely looking at, for them it's an impact of 600 and some thousand dollars. So there's some things we can do jointly between the two school districts. Okay, that's it. Okay, good. Right. Thank you. We will move on to 7.1, the approval of the March 26th regular meeting. So moved. Motion by Amy, is there a second? Second. Second by Raleigh. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Moving on to the consent agenda under claims and accounts. We have board, total board bills to be approved of $64,308.74. Right. Also the resignation of Kelsey Stearns, paraprofessional, March 28th of this year. Uh, resignation Ken Emerson. At the end of this school year, donation uh, from myself from that $500 went for ECFD. Um, and Jason and Brett Cadwell in the amount of $150 for the lunch program. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Sorry. Motion by Lindsay and second by Scott. Scott. All those in favor say aye. 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 Moving on to Number 9.1, this is the second reading of the following ones. 901, Community Ed, 904, 904, Distribution of Materials, 905, Advertising, 906, Community Notification, and 907, Rewards. This is the second reading of these policies. Do we have a motion? So moved. Motion by Amy. Is there a second? Second. Second Bobby. by Bobby. Any questions? Hearing no dis questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Moving on to 9.2, the school calendar. Um, this is the second review of the 1819 school calendar. Any? So moved. moved. Second. Is that by Lindsay? Yeah. And Scott. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Moving on to 9.3, the construction manager. Um, looking for a motion and a second to any other. Do we want to have any discussion about uh, Thursday night? That's what you said we were going to do, Brian, tonight? or? Yeah, you're going to want yep. a motion and a second, then you can open for discussion. Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion um, to uh, enter into contract with Comstock. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. 
Any other discussion or any other? Yeah, the only questions I have, yep. honestly, is that okay? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. absolutely. Yep. So we kick around numbers. We, we had some preliminary stuff, and to me, I think it's important on numbers. Um, first of all, I think we should expect perfection from each of them, and I think both of them, I mean, would provide that. I truly believe that. You know, we've had experiences with both in the past, and I think they're, they've been great experiences. But, you know, when we start looking at numbers, you know, okay, there's a half a percent here, and then there's a superintendent fee here, and then there's a pre-construction fee here. Do we actually have, like, a solid number? Is there a superintendent fee on both? I mean, what is the actual final between the two? Does, I mean, does that mean, you know what I'm saying? Actually, I did talk to Gary Benson yesterday and today, and the part that was missing was a question that we asked in the meeting. Yeah, correct. About that, and he gave me the numbers for it. And short of uh, either figure a 15 month or an 18 month meeting, when you calculate it out, both bids are within $8,000 of each other. What is that based on? Um, he based it on $875 a week for Gary and the government rate of 54 and a half cents a mile, figuring 400 miles a week. Oh, so you're talking about the subsistence yes. component? Yep. Okay. Per DMI, I've always called yep. it, you know, yep. that kind of a thing. You figure that out, and it comes right down to, um, well, it's within $8,804 of each other. Now, that's, that's taking the, the um, referendum cost of $8,500 for Krauss Anderson and having the $100 an hour cost as a wash yeah I, that was the other thing i had written down too like i mean it, it's hard I mean, to how say how many hours is it i mean is is it 100 hours is it 50 hours you know because it's that's the hard thing like what is the norm for hours that a construction management right and that's where ka in? had a solid number yeah and, and that stock was a hundred dollars per hour and let's you know however much we want to use correct so that's that's the difference. So and we're within. I know at that meeting the dollars part, you know, the uh, that optional thing, no dollar stuff came out, but so those were the things that I had. You know, you got eighty-five. I mean, a hundred hours. I guess you know I would consider that a wash. I would agree with you. Um, you know, super versus super is one super paid, both supers paid. That's what I. Well, those are another the big I difference. There's one on the KA side, and there's one on each site for Comstock. Okay, I think you want to be careful on something though. Remember, the, the actual personnel, that's not included in that two and a half for those percents. That's something we calculate with either of the construction management. If you want to have two or three or four or one. But, but it is a head-to-head. -head. What, 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 what I'm saying is, if when, no, what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm saying is either of your companies will provide, they may suggest a different amount of them. But remember, what you're going to do is another next step is whichever company we work with, we're going to be negotiating the rates for the personnel. So if you want to have two superintendents, one on each site, mm -hmm. you're going to have a set rate. That's not in these percents. Right. So, when, you know, the thing about two or this one's going to have one, that's up to the board. You're well, going to make that determination. It, it is to a point, except for the per diem, the travel cost, the that per kind diem of stuff is the difference. will be an added amount that, and for the, one, and it won't be for the other. It, it, well, assuming you're not going to have, if they're living right here. You're going to have right. travel expenses right. most likely, unless whichever of these people is not located right here right. from whatever company. Yep. Okay. Agreed. So, you, you, right. I mean, that, that's something you're going to have. So what are the roughly? And so, I mean, it, so that's asking, the part that's got is. It is the 8,000 roughly right. I mean, I know what the superintendent going rate roughly, you know, roughly is per, you know, the number. I mean, I can pitch that out if everybody really wants. I mean, it's, you're not off at all. I mean, you're probably in the middle, Raleigh, of 
It could be higher, it could be a little less. With? Uh, that per diem rate, is that correct? No, it's, that's right from Gary. You, you, you're talking about for these, you're talking the per diem yes. piece of it. Yeah. And, and again, a lot of that's, these, the different personnel that we're going to be hiring, that are gonna be part of their teams, that we're gonna be paying for, some of them are gonna not be involved in the whole process because in the first place, like a site superintendent, you're not gonna be having them on site until you start working on the site. I mean, not very much before. Well, you know, that's where, and that's where the 18 months came in because you're figuring that we get things going in, in April, things get going, we, I'm assuming we'll wait until the ground, um, well, thaws out here this year. Yeah. Knows, um, could be June. <laughs> Um, you know, we're looking at, depending on how much groundwork's got to be done, May at the earliest, probably into June. So you take the summer and you go out, figuring all the way through the next year and into for a cleanup. Now, one company had it as ending the summer of 2021, and one wrapped it up October of 20. Yeah, and, and, and those are what you're, those uh, are going to be your estimates. And that's, there's going to be, yeah. in my experience in the past, it's going to be, <laughs> We'll see how the weather is. I mean, if we get rain seven days a week and 20 below zero and and uh, where it's almost impossible to work outside, you obviously can't do block. I mean, things happen. Yeah. Things change. So, yeah, it, it's, you know, those are some of the things. It, you you got to decide as a board what your, what the highest priorities are associated with these things. Yeah. We'll you know, if, if you're, if you're, if you're comfortable with the idea of, somebody being you know if if you're comfortable with the idea of a cm also bidding on work yes and the, then, the way the bids are handled i'm you know I'm that that's something that. that you make a decision about yeah that's that's up to you you know you, because your cm is is the one who is going to be receiving the calls yes so as people are going to bid on these things who are they going to be contacting your cm so that's a comfort, that's something you have to decide if you're okay with right. having the CM also be bidding against the people that they're providing information to. So that's I'm, I'm going to raise the bids. There's a motion. sealed bids, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the okay. process. So there's a motion on the, on the table and a second motion still up for a little. I, I just want to add my two cents. <laughs> um, I've worked with Krauss Anderson in the past and I know their history and their longevity and I trust them. I really do. Um, and, I, and I trust the referendum guy. I had, I, I'm not comfortable with Comstock's referendum person. I really am not. We're not making a park. We are building a school. Um, and I like to have somebody that has history and, and knowledge on. But um, again, we have two great companies before us. And I think that the board, just whatever decision is made, we need to be unified on this, and it does not need to be split if all possible. We are all it's in great. this together. I, I don't want to do a high school mu musical little scene, scene thing and say we're all in this together, but I just think that this needs to happen when we work together for it all. I just wanted to say my two cents with my plug for, for Krauss Anderson. So, okay. Yeah, um, okay. But there is a motion on the table. There's a second. Um, for Com Comstock. So all those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. So motion carries 6 0. All right, we will move on to, uh, we tabled 9.4. So we're looking for the 10.1 is the resignation of Lisa Borboom, high school music facts teacher. That's unfortunate that she's resigning um so looking for a motion so moved. by raleigh second and scott all those in favor say aye. aye aye and opposed same sign moving on to 11 11.1 right after this we'll give a 10 15 minute break okay, and we'll get going tables. for uh the board meeting tonight we will be discussing the thing that was tabled that would be for the architects moving that forward um, that would not be, we don't vote on anything at a work session. We're just getting information from that, and that would be put on the agenda for in two weeks, uh, moving forward with that. 
Uh, there's a fin fiscal personnel meeting Monday, April 23rd, also here at 5 o'clock, followed by the board meeting at 6 o'clock. Meeting is adjourned at 6.40.